Typically wholesaling is when you flip your contract to another investor, but there are certain situations where it might be more profitable to wholesale the deal directly to the end buyer, a homeowner. In the flipping industry, this is commonly referred to as wholetailing. And on today's video, I'm gonna show you the 10 steps to wholesale a property to a homeowner coming up. Hi, it's Jerry Norton, and when it comes to flipping real estate, I'm a big believer that you should learn as many different strategies for flipping as you can. In addition to wholesaling, I do fix and flips and new construction, and I even flip notes. Knowing and becoming proficient at multiple exit strategies gives you options to choose the most profitable methods to flip real estate. When I get a lead on a deal, I ask the following question. What is the highest return on investment for this deal given the time, energy, and effort to flip it? Sometimes that means wholesale it to a cash buyer. Sometimes that means buy it, fix it, and flip it. And sometimes that means wholesale it directly to the end buyer or homeowner called wholetailing. Now I'm gonna show you the ideal type of deal for wholetailing and the 10 steps from start to finish. But first, if we've never met, I'm Jerry Norton and this channel is dedicated to helping you make more money right now in real estate, not in 10 or 20 years or even three to five years, but right now so that you can achieve true financial freedom and live your dream life. Consider subscribing to my channel and click the bell icon to get notified when new videos are released. First of all, let me be clear about my definition of wholesaling even to a retail buyer. Wholesaling is when you don't do any work to the property with the exception of maybe cleaning it. As soon as you start to do repairs, even light cosmetics like carpet and paint, it's now a fix and flip. One isn't necessarily better than the other, I just wanna make a clear distinction. I see a lot of investors doing repair work and calling it wholetailing, when in fact it's a light fix and flip. The reason why wholesaling to a homeowner may be more profitable than wholesaling to an investor is because an investor needs a bigger discount because he or she needs enough room in the deal to make a profit fixing and flipping it. Whereas a homeowner is going to live in the home and doesn't need as big of a discount. And since a homeowner is willing to pay more than an investor, you can make a bigger profit wholesaling it to a homeowner. So let's go over the steps. Step one is to identify the ideal wholetail deal. Wholetailing only works if the property is what I call mortgageable. I don't think that's actually a word, so let me explain. When a homeowner buys a home, 99% of the time, they need to get a loan to purchase the home and a lender will require that the home passes a mortgage inspection. In other words, the home has to be in functional working order. If it's missing a furnace or the roof is leaking water everywhere or the plumbing doesn't work, then it's not going to pass an inspection and it won't work to wholetail it. The ideal situation is what I call dated but livable. Dated meaning everything is old and it's not updated to current market trends and livable meaning it's free of any scary issues and has been well maintained and everything is in working order. In other words, mortgageable. A dated but livable home is the perfect situation for doing a wholetail deal. Step number two is to run the wholetail buy formula. Since you're going to flip the home in its current as is condition to a homeowner, instead of using after repair value, like when we do wholesaling to investors, you wanna find out what its current as is value is. Look for five to six similar comps in the area of dated but livable homes. Obviously, since it's not updated, its current value will be lower than the like new comps. Usually 10 to 30% below ARV, depending on the market. Once you know the as is value, subtract closing fees, carrying costs, and profit, to get your maximum allowable offer or MAO. I follow the same ratios for closing fees, carrying costs and profit as I do when wholesaling to investors, which is 9% of sale price for closing costs to buy and resell the property, 6% for carrying costs, or in other words, cost of capital to buy and resell it, and 15% for profit. Those three things add up to 30%. So the wholesale formula is really simple. Current value times 70%, equals your MAO. For example, let's say that the current value of a wholetail lead is 285,000. 285 times 0 0.70 equals 195,500. So let's reverse the number so you can see what it looks like. If you buy the property for 199,500, you have budgeted 9% or 25,650 to cover all of the closing fees to buy it and resell it, including 6% commissions to agents. More on that in a minute. You have budgeted 6% or 17,000 for cost of capital. That's to borrow money to buy it for 199,500 
and carry it until it closes on the sale for $285,000. That might be a little high, but I like to borrow 100% and I like to have a contingency in case it takes longer to sell and it costs me more to carry. And finally, that gives you a budget of 15% or $42,750 for profit. So let me ask you a question. Would you rather wholesale that deal to an investor and make 10 or 15,000 or wholesale it directly to a homeowner and make almost $43,000? I think you see the power of wholetailing. Once you have your MAO, step three is to make the offer to the seller with a 30-day closing unless the seller has to close earlier and then secure the contract. Quick tip here, check with your state first, but put in the contract that the seller gives you permission to market to resell the property upon executed contract. This is very important. Once you have a contract, you now have equitable interest in the property and you want the ability to already start marketing for a retail buyer. If the seller is living in the home, get him or her to agree to let you show the property to potential buyers. If it's vacant, get the owner to give you permission to install a contractor's lockbox with a key. Also, if appropriate, get permission to clean out any furniture or debris so it shows better. If the owner is living there, you'll have to wait until you close on the purchase. Once you have a contract, step four is to open escrow with an investor-friendly title or closing attorney, depending on your state, so that they can verify title is clean, uh, make sure there aren't any liens, et cetera, and prepare for a closing on the agreed upon date with the seller. Once you've opened escrow, step five is to record an affidavit of memorandum. This clouds title with your contract with the seller and prevents him or her from selling the property to someone else. Better safe than sorry? Ask me how I know. Watch this video to learn how to never get cut out of a deal. Step six is to immediately start marketing for a retail buyer. You can put a sign in the yard and see if you can find a retail buyer off market. This would save you 6% in commissions and add even more profit to your deal. You could try that for a week or two, but the fastest way to get your deal in front of the maximum number of buyers is to list the property for sale with a real estate agent and get it on the multiple listing service or MLS. This will cost you typically 6%, but it's worth it to get a buyer and we budgeted for it in our buy formula. Step number seven is to secure funding. Depending on how quickly you get a new buyer, you may be able to use transactional funding or you may need to get other types of short-term funding such as hard money or private money. For example, here in Phoenix, I have a lender who will fund 100% of the purchase, no repairs, but it costs 18% interest only with no points. That's really expensive, but he lends 100% and it's perfect for wholesale deals where you should only be in the deal for a few months or less. And there's no prepayment penalty. To illustrate how much that would cost using the example earlier, if my buy is 199,500 and it takes me 30 days to get a buyer and another 30 days to close, so 60 days total in the deal, I would pay almost $6,000 in carrying costs at 18% interest. But remember, I budgeted $17,000 just in case it takes longer to sell. Pro tip here, keep in mind, if you flip to a buyer who uses FHA financing, there is a 90-day anti-flipping rule. That means you can't resell it for 90 days from the day you close on the purchase. Another reason to make sure you have proper financing in place. If the seller was living there, step eight is to clean it, uh, install a lockbox, and get it show ready. The temptation may be to start making repairs. Just promise me if you do, you'll call it a fix and flip and not a wholesale. Once you get an acceptable offer from a retail buyer, step nine is to execute a contract and set a closing. Position acceptance of the offer as is. The buyer is welcome to do a property inspection, but let them know that you price the property at a discount and you will not be performing repairs. This sets the right expectation that the buyer won't hit you up with a list of 87 things that came up on the inspection report. And step number 10 is to close on the sale, get a big fat wholesale check, celebrate and rinse and repeat. Listen, it's time you start maximizing your profits on deals. The key to successfully flipping houses is having a systematic way to manage all of the moving parts. That's why I took my 15 years experience flipping hundreds and probably now thousands of deals and created an all-inclusive cloud-based house flipping deal management system called Flipster. If you've never heard of Flipster, not only does it organize, streamline, and automate all of the steps to flipping houses, but it actually finds and funds deals for you. It's really awesome, so whether you're working on your first deal or you're already flipping deals every month, Flipster can take you to the next level. If you're into flipping houses, you want yourself to check it out. Click the link in the description. And if you learned something on today's video, be sure to show some love, hit that like button, and leave a comment. Let me know if you plan on using this strategy to make even bigger profits 
wholesaling houses to homeowners. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm dedicated to helping you make more money and less time flipping houses so you can live your dream life. And finally, be sure to watch this next video where I show you another strategy to make 25% more per wholesale deal, becoming what I call a full service wholesaler. Watch that video now. And remember, it's not about the money. It's about having the time and freedom to have, be, do, and give everything you want in life. That's what it's all about. And I'll see you on the next video.